always so nice. To, it's always so nice to be at the Studio School, and I see so many friends here. Thank you for coming. It's really a great pleasure. I um, think that perhaps the biggest quest of the artist is to define an object and then make it. I don't exactly know what an object is. For a mathematician, it's an equation, and for a writer, it's obviously words, language. But I think I came to the conclusion for myself that the object is a series of experiences which I internalize, and somehow that gets put in the Cuisinart and turns out to um, be partly intuition, partly learned, and partly kind of looking into the future. I know that somewhere Plato uh, said that everything we know is simply what we remember, and I kind of agree with that. Um, the relationships that I have put together in the slides that I'm going to show you kind of look like they're one on one, you know, but I can't include everything that I'm doing or thinking or feeling. I'm just doing a kind of simplistic relationship, so please keep that in mind. It's not like I'm looking at Duccio and making a drawing. It's that I've looked at a lot of Duccio and the color has infected me and his passion has infected me and I decided to do a drawing something about Duccio but it's not by any means a one-to-one -one relationship. I next began a series of work use, utilizing crude oil, paper and chipboard. Chipboard is a paper product and I've kind of made sort of oil sandwiches and then I pulled them apart and put them together according to the principles of set theory. They were pre-planned uh, because I was exploring what set theory could mean in an art context. When I worked with Max Dane, we took a walk every morning for four years and he said that he was going to teach me mathematics for artists and he talked about set theory. As I said, he was a top Apologist, and he showed me Fibonacci progressions in nature. I've never been able to look at nature the same. And he also showed me probability theory, which extended became chaos theory later on. And he explained how things went together in nature and what the dissonance uh, was and what the uh, sympathetic things were. And it, uh, when I came to New York, I didn't know what to do with my math. math background because I was doing post-student work and it was sort of abstract and probably pretty awful. I don't really know. Not so, I've got a couple of them around. It's not so awful, but it's not so great either. And it took me a long time to understand the math and what I wanted to do with it. I would do math at night all throughout the 50s and 60s. I would I took what he taught me and I went with it and I always found, I know everybody cringes at math, but the way he taught it was so exciting it didn't have anything to do with all the boring things that you learn in school. So on the left is uh, leveling, which is four feet by eight feet, and on the right is scalar, which is six by ten feet. Scalar was done in 1971, and it was shown at the Modern this summer. They own it. On the left is to situate. Now you can't see it in this in this uh, slide, but there's a charcoal line that goes around the room, and the work is kind of hung off of this charcoal line, almost like a clothesline. And again, it's chipboard, crude oil, and paper. And on the uh, right is intersection. Intersection is the work that was shown in the High Times, Hard Times exhibition that was at the National Academy. And um, that work is traveling in Europe now. It, I think it's at Graz, about to move to Berlin. And intersection is 99 uh, inches by 92 inches, and it goes 15 inches up the wall, which you can't see, ending in a charcoal line, which uh, locates the center of the work.
Uh, by the way, the, in, in the chipboard, the work was to visualize the concept of set theory and topologies, uh, topology. Uh, the following work utilizes a sim simple principles of under, over, and through. Uh, the work uh, on the left is uh, 30 by 40 inches on Strathmore paper, which isn't made anymore, by the way, and <laughs> and um, it's crude oil with uh, a commercial grease on top of it that's used on machinery cup grease. And this work is old; it's 72. So, and everything is still in perfect condition. And um, my my thought about it was uh, keeping in mind this is a set. My thought about it was that uh, this work was would permeate the surface and therefore go through the surface. Um, at this time, uh, I was very aware of Art de Povera and uh, also of Joseph Boyce. And um, while I can't say they influenced me directly, I was aware of their work. And I, when I saw their work, I felt their work, and it certainly went into my work. Now this work is two sheets of paper um, that have been folded and torn, as you can see, and glued together with tar, and tar is painted on the top. Um, and of course, that represents over. And I still work, in work that I'm doing now, I still work with the principles of under, over, and through. So w this was part of forming what would become a lifelong vocabulary. This group of work, as I said, is called the In Iander series. And this is two sheets of paper with the tar in between. So obviously this is the under part. In most of my previous work, the underlying mathematical concept is set theory. Beginning around 1973, I began working with the golden section, which I'd learned at Ecole de Beaux-Arts. So I was pulling out you know, a very, a very ancient form of working and pulling it out from my own background. Um, and it's kind of a magic ratio. In fact, you, you can hardly make a mistake in a work once you begin to use it. It's really quite spectacular. And as you can see, it's arrived at by taking a square, any square, bisecting it, pulling a diagonal up from the center to the upper corner, and then making an angle. Just to be quick, I usually pull a string down from that corner. Uh, and the bottom... Uh, 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 dimension will give you the golden section which is based on that square and um, that and the um, gold section of course is a proportion. Um, its proportion is 1.6183 something goes on forever. Here are some examples of my spiral use of the golden section. On, on the right hand side is a preliminary drawing for a work called First Day, which um, utilizes the spiral of the golden section as in the Nautilus shell, and it also had something to do with uh, the Parthenon, where it spent a lot of time. And on the right is another wall painting I did utilizing these same principles. Now, I began really in serious earnest using the golden section, as I said, around 1974 or something like this. And this is a, a group, I'm about to show you a group of, of paintings called 
the Rogue series, and these are the ones that uh, you know have to, something to do with Duccio. On um, the left is Noli Me Tangere, which means "Do Not Touch Me," which is what Christ said, as you know. Uh, and it's 55 by 34. And on the right is Duccio, uh, the washing of the feet from the Maesta in Siena. For my work, I chose an open piece of linen and I gessoed one side of it and demarked it in the golden section and the square and I painted it and then I folded it. None of the shapes arrived at are arbitrary. It's all a continuous sheet of paper folded various ways. My work is called The Discourse, and it's 34 by 55. Uh, and the Duccio is the Sermon on the Mount, again from the Maesta. The work on the left is called The Descent, 1976, 33 by 52. And that work is presently on display in the Philadelphia Museum in the New Contemporary Wing. And uh, on the right is the crucifixion from the Maestas. 